Okay. Welcome to the video. Happy whatever day it is. It's a beautiful day today. Hope you're doing well. This is a bass guitar that I built. So I found various parts on the internet and slapped them all together and made a bass that I wanted to have. First segment of this video, I want to talk about all the parts and basically where you can buy it. And if you wanted to make this exact bass, technically you can't, uh, only because of a couple reasons, but I will try to get you 90% of the way there of building this exact base. First, let's start on my eBay purchases. I bought the bridge of this guitar um, for $43.89. Uh, this is a Fender, what they refer to, uh, it says a Fender, quote unquote, badass style four string chrome with the mount screws, brand new. And they sold this, it is hefty by the way. I got the body of this guitar on eBay as well. This is a Alder body. So uh, I purchased this for, well the order total was $122.84. And uh, the way that it comes, just FYI, the neck pocket is already made. Um, there are no holes for the bridge. There is a pickup hole, a little bit of cavity work done for control knobs. I love the way it looks, although I've done a lot, a lot of work to it, um, so it doesn't come this way. I wish it did. That'd be cool. Uh, the next thing I bought on eBay was this neck. Now, this is a maple neck, um, a short-scale neck. The headstock actually comes squared off, um, so it originally looked like this, kind of this sort of thing where it goes like that, and it makes a rectangle. Uh, I had to shape the headstock the way that I wanted. It's got a little bit of as you can kind of tell, it's got a little bit of like a dent right there, but it doesn't really matter. I, I kind of like the way the way that it looks. The neck actually cost me a total of $74.36, including shipping. So whatever we're up to is whatever we're up to right now. Let's talk about the rest of it because I spent more money. The next thing I bought were the electronics. This is the Golden Age Premium Wiring Kit for P-Base that I bought on Amazon. In total, it's around $33.70. Um, but that does not include uh, shipping, so I'm not sure what the total price is, but you know, maybe $35, who knows. Next thing, the amazing thing on, the, on this beast of a guitar, the thing that makes it awesome, are these pickups. These glorious black and silver pickups. Sexy, sexy pickups. These are actually quarter round, pick, uh, quarter wound pickups. Uh, so they actually have a little bit more output than a standard P bass pickup. It's actually one of the more popular pickups that Seymour Duncan sells. And right now they retail for a hundred bucks. I'm sure someone somewhere didn't like it. So you could probably pick it up for like 80 bucks. Anyways, these are some gold knobs. I don't know what the price is, but so $403 right now for everything except for the strings and the tuners. These are called the Geiker tuners, I believe on Amazon. The 30 bucks and 99 cents. Uh, that's without shipping. So, you know, round up. In total, we're at $438.83. So it's getting a little expensive. You've basically surpassed a classic vibe territory in terms of buying a bass off the rack. But a classic vibe doesn't have an older body. They don't have these kind of tuners that are high end like this, really. They're still good, but probably not as good. Um, they don't come with the strings that I bought, which they're super smooth since they're flat wound. Flat wound, if you don't know what that means, go and check it out on Rhett Shaw's channel. I'll, I'll try and throw it up in a tag right here uh, in the top right of your screen. Flat ones essentially mean that uh, the string itself uh, doesn't have ridges across the string, so it's very smooth. Uh, it also has different tonal qualities. Um, and so for bass, uh, flat wound is a lot more popular than for guitar or any other guitar for that matter. Uh, and if you don't like the feeling of standard uh, strings, uh, which are called round wound strings, then uh, I suggest you try flat wounds because it's super smooth, it's super glossy, and it feels great. And it's part of the reason why I did it in the first place. And the other reason is, you know, the Beatles did it. So how can you say the Beatles are wrong, you know? One small thing I actually forgot is this uh, custom Fender Shop thing that you can buy on Amazon as well. It's around 20 something dollars. Now, the way that it looks, uh, that is that is manual labor. And the way that it plays, also manual labor. You're like, what about the, the black plate? 
what about that, bro? Well, actually, uh, I didn't buy that. I actually, uh, I took this plate, uh, it used to be chrome, off of uh, the throttle mount of a go-kart that I, uh, I used to have, and I decided to uh, find a shape that I thought looked good, and then cut it out of that, and then spray paint it black, then make holes, and, uh, and use that for the control um, cavity cover. But I thought it'd be cool for the history of the base. Um, there are a couple mistakes I made. Uh, so don't do what I'm about to show you. Here's some holes in the back, actually. Uh, one right here, one kind of right there, and one right here. The reason why this happened is that there's a wire running between this pot right here and the bridge. Now, to run that wire, you need to make a hole that's not already there. So you need a, a drill bit that's deep enough, uh, sorry, that's shallow enough to get from here to there um, without making any marks up here. And so I ended up doing it, but honestly, it's super close to the end of this bridge, but you just can't see it. Uh, so thankfully I did that uh, right like the second try and I got a, a wire running, running across it. So now it's good. I drilled holes for the bridge, it works. Now I'm making a hole between here and there to ground the bridge and the strings um, so to the rest of the control cavity, but the problem is we don't have a long enough bit right now. It's probably getting to like here and not there. So, whatever. That hole. I don't know if you can see it, but this hole right here is what I'm talking about. I sanded the living crap out of this body to make sure that it's buttery smooth, and it is. I've finished this guitar with Monty's Relic Wax. Uh, I highly suggest you go and check that out if you're trying to make your guitar look darker, either on the fretboard or the body, or you're doing a Relic build of a guitar. Go and check them out. It's unreal. Obviously, one other thing that I did really is I added um, this burnt contour. Um, my other guitar that I've done, I did a video on it. If you want to go and check that out, you can. Um, I added a full burnt design on that electric guitar over there that you see on, hanging on the wall. And it, it's something that I really like, the way that, that it feels when um, wood is burnt and it's it's kind of smoothed off. It feels really good against uh, my body and my hands. And so I really enjoy this piece of the guitar. The frets on this thing are okay, not great. Depends on who you are. But the next upgrade that I'm doing to this guitar actually is I'm gonna I'm gonna be doing a fret job on this bass really soon and I'm going to be putting some pretty small frets on this bass and the reason why there's this old wizard who's got a video out there uh, he's huge he played with like Phil Collins and all these people but seriously he looks like a wizard and he he has mandolin wire on his bass guitar so uh, I'll keep you in tune for that but anyways Let's go to a sound demo. Here we go. This is tone all the way up. I actually haven't tuned it today, so I'm not sure if it's actually in tune right now, but uh, it's pretty close. So. <laughs> Here, uh, here it is with a pick. Uh, this is tone all the way down and, or off. All right, and this is the tone all the way up. Here we go. Alright, um, so that was a little example of how the bass sounds. I hope you guys learned a little bit about some of the mistakes that I made, how much it costs, whether or not you are willing to build a bass and, and put the time into it. For some of you, it may not be worth it, and it's probably best to just go and buy a classic vibe. But if you want a custom experience, and you want to learn how your bass actually works, 
and in everything about guitars and you're really nerdy about things like I am and you want to have hands-on experience with it then I really suggest that you go the build route and just kind of build a parts caster go and find things on the internet that you know will fit together and put it together and make and, and go and make an instrument that you really love that you've been dreaming about so I hope to see you in the next one please subscribe <laughs>